Hi, welcome to my office. And this welcome to the second part of I Am Enough video. <laughs> Last week I posted a video that went on, maybe a bit of a rant about my feelings of being enough, uh, or rather not being enough. And uh, I got a lot of comments, a lot of views, which was awesome. And there was a few things that I realized from that. First of all, my headaches went away. So sometimes just expressing how you feel and laying things out uh, can really help alleviate a lot. The other thing was that um, in that week, a lot of improvements have happened in my life relating to the issues that I was having last week. And like we do when we talk in person, one-on-one -on -one with people, uh, we get a lot of feedback when we are vulnerable and express how we feel. And the same thing happened when I expressed on, on Facebook. Uh, one of the things I've been hearing lately from a lot of people is they're leaving Facebook or social media because they're feeling that a lot of people are putting their kind of best face forward and not really being authentic. And, you know, people putting their, their kids' marks up, they're putting their great holidays up, and they're putting all these accomplishments, but not really expressing some of the challenges that we face and so forth. So I kind of realized that I can do the same thing sometimes. Being a marketer and branding, I think about all the time, you know, putting your best foot forward. That's my training. But I started realizing that I also am experiencing some of the darker, more difficult things in life, like everyone, and what if I shared? So that's one of the reasons why I decided to do that. And it was really interesting to see the response. And as I mentioned, just like when you share, or just like when I share one-on-one -on -one with somebody or in a, in a small group, you get a whole bunch of different responses. And I found the ones uh, that really helped me and the ones that maybe didn't help me as much were uh, a good reflection for me when I go forward to help others. So just like when we're sharing, um, when someone shares with us something that's happened in their life that they're having a difficulty with, we can respond with, you know, compassion and kindness, which I received, which was awesome. We can also receive um, from other people kind of acknowledgement for what you're going through, even for the fact that you're sharing, and also them sharing their own experiences, which, again, I received in tenfold or more, which was awesome. The one thing that I did receive that I really was not helpful, I realized, was uh, advice. People saying that I should do this, I should be this. Um, just again, like sometimes I do when I'm talking to someone, I hear what they're doing and I go, oh, well, you should be doing this. When you're laying yourself out and being vulnerable, and what I found is that when someone tells you, well, actually, you know, you should stop striving, you should stop trying to do so much, you should just be happy where you are. All those shoulds added to that feeling of not being enough. So it was a, a kind of an eye-opener for me to hear that and realize that, you know, of course, where it's coming from is a place of kindness and, and compassion. And it's less helpful than just simply sharing their own stories. And I realized that for myself. So that was the first thing I, I recognized. Uh, the second thing was that a lot of what I was dealing with was kind of the uh, maybe, I don't know if it's the darker side of my strength, but really my strengths of being really someone who's very purposeful, very um, striving, very much trying to do a lot of things, achieve a lot of things in my life can be a, a strength gone overused, if you will. And because of that, uh, it's very hard sometimes for me to live in the moment and I'm trying to do so much or I, are you doing so much multitasking. So sometimes when we look at the things that we're struggling with, it helps to see that often it is our the other side of it is our strength and to be again compassion from that and and see about how we can work from our strength out of our challenge rather than trying to work on our our difficulties or our weaknesses so that was the second thing uh, the third thing was this uh, the fact that I do strive a lot and I'm always kind of thinking of the future is that sometimes I live in the future a lot and I had the analogy of Christmas my favorite time of the Christmas season is Christmas Eve and the reason is because it's so full of potentiality that it's that anticipation, that excitement of what's to come has always been the most magical part. And if I start to put that same um, approach to my life and what I'm doing, when I think about anything I'm doing, any project I'm working on, that if I look at the journey and the excitement and the unraveling of it, then if I can live there and be more present, that that's where the true magic is. So when I start to get ahead of myself, I think back of Christmas Eve and, and, the, and that magic. 
The fourth thing was um, that with all this driving, uh, I'm not doing some of the things that I'm, I'm learning through mindfulness, which is really being present. And while I thought some of the tasks I was doing were either mundane, I didn't like it, I was getting upset with myself, actually when I took the time to do them just by themselves, without all the clutter around of having to do something else, I actually enjoyed them. Even something like doing the dishes or doing my expenses, when I was truly present doing it, I got I enjoyed it. There was some challenge to it or there was some just peacefulness to it or whatever. Of just leaving all of that clutter and noise around the other things I had to do and being present really allowed me to enjoy things I thought I didn't even like. I was really amazed by that. The, the fifth thing was that, as I said before in my other video, was just simply acknowledging the things that I am doing. You know, I so often I'm striving for the next thing that I forgot that I've already accomplished something. And it's really that idea of kind of patting yourself on the back and realizing all the things that I am doing really helped to kind of calm that fire in the belly that was getting a little bit out of control. The sixth thing that I noticed was that also my mantra that I mentioned in the last video was really working for me. And so every time I got that idea that I should be doing something else, um, that you know self-criticism that was hidden in um, that multitasking approach, that I kept saying to myself when it came up, I was alert and said, okay, I am enough. I'm doing what I need to be doing right at this moment. And it was a really a magical and amazing how those vo that voice got um, softer, quieter, and uh, not as not as kind of painful, not as uh, pushing for me. So that mantra did really work for me, and I continue to use it. But I don't need to use it as much now, even a week later, which is awesome. Uh, the um, seventh thing was that I realized that feeling of doing not doing enough, not being enough, relates to not having enough. There's a really close correlation. When you look around your surroundings and you think about, or what I do, I look at my home and think, oh, I need to you know, update the kitchen, or I need to do something in my yard, or I need to paint something, or I need to buy more clothes, or I need to whatever, need, need, need. It's a stuff thing. It's a not having enough. Then you feel like you have to do more. I need to earn more money. I need to be working to ma maintain all this stuff. So there's a really close correlation between that having enough concept and the doing and being enough. And I've been reading the book, um, Your Money or Your Life, which is awesome. And it really helps to kind of think about financial independence. It's not about how much money you have, but really how you feel in your own self about what you're doing and what you have. And uh, the eighth thing was really that idea that... Um, planning, routines, um, really helped me to ground myself. I really did a detailed plan every day, by hour actually, to kind of say, okay, this is what I'm doing. Often I didn't get to it, but it helped me reduce my to-do list because I could really see how much I could get done in a day and how much I couldn't get done. And, um, and the routines of, you know, that 21-day um, idea, that 21-day challenge. If you do something for 21 days, it becomes a routine. I started um, quite a few weeks ago doing the 5 a.m. club. That well, For 21 days, it became now my, my routine where at 5 a.m. I wake up and for an hour and a half, I do the things that I do uh, for myself. Meditation, reading inspirational books, and doing my writing. So that's been good. And I just keep adding things to that. Like um, I've added yoga and walking in the woods 21 day. I'm now my second week of that. And um, or my third week actually, and I've stopped drinking the 21 days, not drinking alcohol at all. Not that I drank a lot, but just to try to see how my body would feel with absolutely no, no alcohol. And to, it's amazing, these routines can really help you a lot. I've also been doing that the 21 day of planning every single day to help me. And uh, I, the last thing I realize is that if I take projects and I break them down into bite sized elements, it really, really helps me. Um, to be able to digest them better. Again, what I, I tend to do, and it's my strength, is I see a big vision, I have ideas, and I want to do it all, and I want to do it all now. But recognizing that strength can hurt me if it gets out of control. I try to bring it down to a bite-sized level. So when my book has become so overwhelming to me, even write a chapter, 
what I've been doing is just looking at a scene by scene and working on that one scene and not get overwhelmed by the other. And again, enjoying that, just developing that one scene, not worrying about what the next scene is going to be. So those are the, the nine things that I kind of realized over the last week, and it's been really helpful for me. Uh, thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been helpful for you, and if you uh, like it, please share, and share your experiences as well. Again, I would recommend <laughs> that it's sharing. It's not about advice for me, because I don't need advice. We all have our own advice. It's that idea that sharing your own experiences can help and inspire others. And uh, I'll just close with one thing. What I, I found with social media as a marketer, and one of the things I heard from one of the leading social media is if you look at what we share, and what I try to do is what I, what I share on social media, if it either entertains, inspires, or helps somebody in some ways through sharing, then it's a value. If I look at what I'm about to share and it doesn't do any of those, I usually decide not to. So... Um, some thoughts for today. I hope you enjoyed or inspired or taught you something. And uh, happy, happy day and namaste.